So uh, to summarize the uh, the government budget uh, um, constraint, uh, government paid government purchases are paid the G that appears in agri demand C plus I plus G plus net exports. Uh, G is uh, financed by uh, either taxes, which are real, uh, or uh, borrowing the government prints bonds and sells them. Uh, this becomes a future tax, or the uh, the central bank uh, prints money. And uh, which is also a nominal variable, and uh, this leads to, if it's beyond seniorage, leads to uh, the inflation tax. If for a moment we just say that we're only looking at the fiscal policy, not uh, monetary policy, so the, no change in the money supply, and then G minus T determines the uh, current government uh, uh, budget situation. If G is greater than T, that means government purchases are greater than tax revenues, which means that they they're having a government budget deficit, which means they must be selling bonds. In other words, government debt is going up. If on the other hand, G is less than T, that means it's receiving more in tax revenue than spending. It has a government budget surplus. Government must be buying back bonds and the government debt is going down. An important point to another distinction to make is that the current government debt situation, these are all outstanding bonds that have been sold, is a stock variable. It's like the amount of water in a swimming pool. Whereas the budget deficit or surplus, whether the government is buying or selling bonds, is a flow variable. So it's like the water going into a swimming pool or water coming out. Important distinction in economics, the difference between a stock variable and a, and a flow variable. Um, to summarize as well, there are two types of macroeconomic, macroeconomic stabilization policies. There's fiscal policy and monetary policy. Uh, uh, fiscal policy uh, is uh, changes in government spending or tax revenues, uh, and this is controlled, at least in Canada, by the Prime Minister and the Minister of Finance. Minister of Finance is probably the most important person in the Cabinet. In the United States, it's a little bit more complicated because the uh, the, the, the President usually proposes a budget, it, it, but it goes to the Congress for approval. U.S. Constitution is written such that the House of Representatives, which is part of the Congress, must decide any any tax measures. Uh, often the president, and as everybody knows, the president, the White House, and the Congress are not necessarily in agreement, particularly with the House of Representatives. Uh, on the other hand, monetary policy means just changes in the printing of money. Um, the, in Canada, this is controlled by the Bank of Canada. In the United States, it's the U.S. Federal Reserve. If you travel abroad, go to another country, uh, it's always the organization or the institution that, that prints money that controls monetary policy. Um, because of the inflation tax, it's often uh, the desire is that the, the monetary authority, the, the Bank of Canada, for example, be independent of the government. So that means to say the Bank of Canada doesn't want to print money. It tells the prime minister, no, we're not going to do it. Uh, bonds, uh, in effect, can be either monetary or fiscal policy because the, both the Bank of Canada and the government can intervene in the bond market, either selling bonds. Bonds are always issued by the government, but they may be uh, they may be bought, uh, and the Bank of Canada always has a has a supply on stock. The um, uh, the effect of these policies, government, uh, monetary, and fiscal policy, is to push the aggregate demand curve to the left or the right, and this is what we're going to look at in subsequent uh, subsequent uh, uh, lectures. Thank you.